Matt, uh, we are reintroducing uh, an old friend to the program here in Tom Willis, who some may remember from his campaign for Senate a few years back. And Tom was quite a presence on this uh, station during the course of that campaign. He made a point of uh, being a frequent guest on this program to get his thoughts out. Uh, Tom is here for another reason today, and for that, I turn to you, Mr. Miller. Well, uh, we're here today for the opportunity to share with uh, our listeners uh, and viewers uh, about an upcoming event that is specifically designed for uh, for men and boys. Uh, it, it is for uh, uh, the men in our community, uh, whether uh, grandparents, uh, parents, or, or children alike. It's called Building Tomorrow's Leaders, and it's going to be taking place at Independent Bible Church. And uh, I'll be honest, uh, FCA was kind of asked to come in and be a part of, of this opportunity uh, as uh, Pastor Lowry at the church had reached out, um, he has uh, contact with the guest speaker, who is Darius Holland, a former NFL standout, won a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. And uh, we jumped on and said, yeah, we would love to be a part of this event, and we'll do what we can to especially share it with our, our coaches in the area, uh, to be able to have them talk to their teams, and especially uh, kids in leadership on those teams to be able to come out. And Tom is a part of the committee at IBC that is is helping to coordinate and put this event together. Well, Tom, welcome back to the program. Great to see you. Thanks, Rob. It's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me. How have you been spending your time since uh, we were catching up with you on a regular basis during the election? Well, we um, in 2019, we deployed to Israel. Um, that was part of my military service with the West Virginia National Guard. And um, subsequent to that, Rob, my, we had a, a family member. My son was uh, ill, so I spent the last couple of years uh, really, as his primary caregiver, and uh, that's that's been keeping me busy. Lately, we we started a new business, and uh, and that's that's always a challenge. Um, so that's been going well. So we feel blessed in that regard. But it's it's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. Tell us about this event, June the twenty fourth. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, Darius Holland, like Matt said, he's a former NFL defensive lineman. You know, one of the tough guys right in the middle of the trenches. Mm -hmm. Now he is a chaplain with mm -hmm. uh, special operations in the U.S. Army. He serves down at Fort Bragg, where I, I spend a lot of time training myself. Uh, so a very impressive guy, very dynamic speaker. And you know, at, 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 at our church, we identified a need for men in general. Uh, we, we feel that uh, being a man in our society today, today is, is difficult. Uh, there, there's a, a lot of uh, forces that sort of flow against uh, authentic manhood. Um, this event with Darius, we view as an opportunity to encourage men. Um, all, all folks are, are invited, like Matt said. It's not just for uh, Independent Bible Church. It's for the entire community. Um, it's on June 24th in the evening. Um, there's going to be a dinner. It'll, it, it'll be, uh, we'll serve dinner, and, and Darius will speak to us and encourage us. But more than that, we're also looking at it as an opportunity to launch a community of men, to, to support each other and to walk in community with each other. And uh, we're going to get our hands dirty. We're going to get out in the community, and we're going to serve. Um, we're going to help some organizations that are doing good work in our community, like the, the Homeless Shelter Martinsburg Rescue Mission. We're looking for um, uh, other opportunities. We're going to be helping single moms. We're going to be helping widows. And uh, this is an opportunity for men to lock arms together, to uh, build relationships, to realize that they're not alone. And, um, and we're going to do some good things together, just like uh, the good Lord created us to do. Matt and I have had this conversation numerous times in that uh, men really have a responsibility uh, to take care of, uh, I have to think of the best way to put this, uh, to take care of the things that we start, hmm. right? And that mm -hmm. includes children. Hmm. And uh, too many of us have done a terrible job of being responsible for the children that we put on this earth, that we help to create, uh, walking away from those responsibilities, uh, not just financially, but uh, paternally, mm -hmm. uh, from from an emotional standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, from a just being there standpoint. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more, Rob. And the statistics bear that out. You know, yeah. if if you look at households without a father, uh, the the daughters in those households are seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teenager. Mm -hmm. The children in that household are four times more likely to live in poverty. Um, the, the percentage of kids in state institutions, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a juvie or, or, and that sort of thing, or it, it's 70, 80 percent, you know, w coming from fatherless homes. So the, the, the statistics bear out exactly what you're saying. But I think that you have to back it up a little bit. 
before before a man can really be a good father, because that takes giving, right? That, that's a giving of yourself, and that's really a surplus, right? You're giving out of a surplus. You can't give unless you have a surplus. And so w- what we're trying to do is focus on the man first, right? And, and, and for a man, one of the hardest things for us to learn as we mature is how to control our appetites, right? Mm-hmm. How to control our will. And, and once we can do that, then we can start looking outwards, right? So the first step would be to, to control the internal and then we're in a position to give to the external. And, and that's difficult to do, though, unless you're in a community because life knocks you down. Um, you know, the, 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 the flow of messaging towards our men in society today is just keep your mouth shut, you know, be quiet. Um, you're, not, you're not necessary. <laughs> you're not necessary. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the truth of the matter is men are necessary, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially raising children, especially raising family. Right. Um, but we, we feel like uh, men need encouragement, and, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to come together. We're going to lock arms. We're going to encourage each other. We're going we're gonna to learn um, you know, a godly model for manhood, you know, yeah. control ourselves, um, and then, and then lead, our, lead and love our families, provide and protect for our, our wives and our children, yeah. and then from there overflow even more into the community uh, to do yeah. some good work in the community and have a lot of fun while we're doing it. John. Yeah. This is so refreshing. But I, my, my thought is the notes that I've, I've written here, we live in a world where there's a, actually a phrase that resonates with people called toxic masculinity, which is what I believe is what you call authentic manhood, right? I don't understand the to- toxicity of it. I'm of a certain age and a certain time, right? And uh, there are roles for men and women, but man, you're going to need body armor. Isn't the... <laughs> Are you prepared for the for the backlash? He's a, on he's all a of green this? beret. He's got body armor. Well, that's, to spare. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, that, that's a good question, John. And I, I think that it's important to always define these terms. So, when you say toxic masculinity, not my phrase. Just I understand what you're saying, I, and, and I get you 100. Um, percent Really, if you ask somebody to define that. What they're really talking about is just rude behavior. <laughs> so can we just call it rude behavior in, instead of toxic masculinity? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, so it's important to define terms. But um, the thing about – that's one of the characteristics – I'm glad you brought it up, John. I think that's one of the characteristics about authentic manhood that's missing in, in society to a large degree. And that's a willingness to, to take the chest shots if you need to mm-hmm. to speak the truth. Um, you know, it was interesting. I was talking to my wife and my daughter uh, this week. You know, I was thinking about this show, and I, I didn't lead them in any direction. I didn't. I just asked them, you know, what, what do you guys look for? My daughter's getting ready to go to college. She just graduated high school, and um, and uh, and my wife. And so they said, what do you what are you guys looking for in a man? What do you think women in general are looking for in a man? And I, I didn't, you know, lead them any. I just wanted to hear what they had to say. But I was surprised. Um, one of the first things they said is um, someone who's willing to step up and take the responsibility, the, the primary responsibility for, for pro- providing. And uh, that was important to them. I think a lot of women, um, that's important to a lot of women. They may be afraid to say it because of the, you know, the feminist backlash. It's not politically correct. Um, but there is a responsibility in a household. Someone has to have the f- primary responsibility. Mm-hmm. Not to say you can't have a wife that earns more. Or that's working. That's that's fine, and that's that's uh, that's divinely ordained. You know, Proverbs thirty one. The the wife is you know, she's got several businesses. She's <laughs> buying and selling real estate. Mm-hmm. Nothing, but th- there is something about uh, the the primary responsibility and the weight mm-hmm. of that 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 God designed men's shoulders to carry. And it, uh, that was the first thing that they hit on. I thought that was interesting. Um, a few others, but you know, if you're walking in authentic manhood. And your identity is secure uh, as a son of God, then the chest rounds will come. But um, but if your identity is secure, it's secure, mm-hmm. right? So you can't be moved off of off of that off of that mm-hmm. anchor. Tom, I think you, as you were talking about it and defining it more as the rude behavior um, earlier today on the drive back from Berkeley Springs, I was just thinking about First Timothy four twelve uh, when Paul's encouraging Timothy, who's a young man at that time and going to be in a leadership position, to not allow anyone to look down on his youth. But then he tells him to set an example in speech, conduct, love, 
faith and purity. And, and you know, I think when you look at the a lot of what is called toxic masculinity or rude behavior, it, it, it comes down to these areas, you know, of, of speech and conduct and a lack of love, a lack of faith and a lack of purity. And, and so those are areas to, to be worked on, as you said earlier, working that, that kind of inside uh, to then be able to have that, that surplus to give outside. Yeah, that, that comes down to you can't do what I say until you see me do what I do. Hmm. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you can talk a big game, but if you're right. leading a life that's a bad example to your children, what do they see yeah. as opposed to what do you say? Yeah, do, do as I say, not as I do, the old saying mm-hmm. that, that used to be there, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. And, or the old, the old saying, I, I can't hear what you're saying because your actions are yelling so loud to me. <laughs> right. The uh, event is on June the 24th, building tomorrow's leaders with Darius uh, Holland. And it's $10. Dinner is provided from 5 until 9 at the Independent Bible Church at 2306 Hedgesville Road. Uh, we've had some questions on our comment section, Tom, if there is an age limit to this and are women permitted <clears throat> well let, let, let me address the the women question first we we discussed that and um w- th- this event is for men only and the reason is because there's a special bonding that can really uh, only happen when there's only men in the room and um that that may fall into the category of uh, of, of what some people would attack but but it's true I'm just telling you the truth today. So there's a special bonding that occurs. And when a woman's present, the dynamic changes and men behave differently. We, we want we want folks to, to be able to drop their guard a little bit and um, and just be amongst the guys. So it's a it's a male only event. Um, as far as is that there, there's not an age limit on uh, who can come. So if folks if folks want to bring their sons, uh, they're welcome to do that. Uh, there there is no child care provided. So, for, you know, for toddlers and that sort of thing. But if they're old enough to sit, you know, and, and, and eat dinner with us, then, then they're welcome to come. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you bring the young ones, it'll be fun to see what fathers really know how to diaper a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gilstrap. There are other organizations that are men only. I'm a Mason. And there are. So how is this fundamentally different from what you're trying to do is fundamentally different from those existing organizations? Well, I, I, you know, it's funny. There was, a, there was a report that just came out from the Surgeon General, and I believe it came out this morning talking about the, the fact that as a society we're losing community and uh, so so there's you have all kinds of organizations you, you know you've got the, the 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 veterans organizations American yeah. Legion and you know several of those I'm members of the the Masons the Moose the Elk you know and, and the the difference the difference really uh, for the church the men's group at the church that that we're creating moving forward is is uh, is Jesus Christ is 100 percent at the center of it and so as we as we walk out and define manhood we're defining it from a biblical perspective that's not for everyone and uh and and there's no there's no compulsion to you know to join or to to conform just an open invitation so everyone is welcome um if if you're already a follower of christ come on if you're not come on we're we're a uh, a, a band of misfits uh let you know led by a band of misfits and uh we're, we're just there to support each other and and help um, help walk out our faith uh, centered on Jesus Christ. That's that's really the difference, I would say. Tom, there are some who uh, tie uh, in the decline of uh, men's participation in their responsibilities with the ending of the military draft, uh, with the theory being that military service helps to make a real man out of you, helps to teach you responsibilities, respect. Uh, and, and obviously there are many other things you learn in the military uh, as well. Do you equate the two? I, I think that there is a, there, there's a correlation, not necessarily a causation uh, in that regard. And, and here's what I mean. So 73% of men say that they really feel like their life started when they had kids. And, and I, would, I would equate having a child with uh, the draft and what's happening there for the first time in a, in a in a young man's life he's learning how to focus not on himself but focus on others or focus on a team right and so that's happening in the military by definition you're focused on the team and the team's success the mission right and and, and, and when you're in a family and you have a child um, that that changes things right for the first time a man 
is responsible for this helpless little human being that you can't even roll over when they first start. And so, so I would, I would, it may be helpful here to define how I view authentic manhood. And this, this is Tom's definition. Um, but it, it's, it's a, it's a walking humbly with God with uh, a focus on daily uh, sacrificial service, serving others, uh, and a courageous stand for the truth. Right? Those are the elements that I would, I would say uh, define uh, authentic manhood. And so when you have things like the draft or uh, being responsible for a child, it forces you to confront the fact that up to that point you may have been living a selfish, self-centered life, mm-hmm. and now you're forced to, <clears throat> by necessity, focus on serving others. The event that you're doing at the Independent Bible Church, is that something that you're doing at different locations around the state, or is this a one and done? And if I missed that at the beginning of the interview, my apologies. No, no, you didn't. <clears throat> well, right now, we just have a, a one-time event with with Darius Holland coming in. Um, we, we think folks will be excited to hear about his, you know, his story, his testimony from uh, NFL and, you know, how he came to Christ and then... And then um, you know, playing in the NFL and then transitioning to special operations in the military. Uh, that's a one-time event that we have scheduled right now. But as far as the community that we're building, um, we'll see. We'll see where God takes it. Right now, uh, we're, we're just forming it and, um, uh, and getting, out, getting out the door, getting our hands dirty to help people uh, in this area. You know, if, if the good Lord causes it to spread, then then um, His will be done. So, but, but right now, that, that's, that's where we are. You ran for Senate. So at one point in your life, you had a clear interest in getting politicians involved in things, and that being yourself as a politician. <coughs> what role do elected officials have in family? Well, I think I, I think that in today's in in, the, in today's environment, we we have too many politicians, and we don't have enough statesmen. Uh, I ran in, in 2018 for U.S. Senate uh, to serve as a statesman. And the difference really is is whether a person stands on principle or not, right? Versus whether someone makes decisions based off the polls, because you'll you'll see some folks they they, they may vote uh, uh, pro life today, but if the wind changes uh, and they need to get elected because the you know the 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 area is turning from red to purple, maybe to blue, well tomorrow they might be pro choice. That's a politician. A statesman is someone who who stands on the truth. And you asked specifically about family. Well, I think it would be refreshing to hear you know, some, some statesmen, politicians, some folks involved in politics talk about some of the truths that we talked about today. Um, you know, the, the society, the health of a society is directly correlated with the health of the men in that society. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about women's and children's rights. We're talking about education. We're talking about building and infrastructure. We're talking about civility, um, discourse. All the all the facets of a civilization that we take for granted in the Western world because they were built on the on the foundation of Judeo-Christian principles. Um, not enough folks are talking about that, and and we're seeing an erosion of it, and that's why folks are alarmed about the state of our society. I think it's more pernicious than that. I think we're now in, in a place in society where we shout down the truth. People are afraid to speak their own truth. I'm, I'm not sure that there is such a thing as an absolute truth. But there is an unwillingness of in the body politic for people to say, no, this is you're wrong. That's not how it works. You know, we talk about what is the definition of men and women now. We've complicated things. um, And and all of this is spun out of control because people in general don't forgive me man up. You know, they don't just come out and say. No, that's not th- this. I disagree with what you're saying. It's not. It doesn't have to be insulting. It's not like I think you're an idiot. It's just I. I disagree, and and people get shouted down for that. And so what happens? They become quiet, and because they don't want the confrontation, because real you know nice people don't want to to confront folks. And um, if if you can untie that knot, God bless you. What. Well, I- I think you're right, John. I, I, I agree with you. I I, I think that um, you know may, maybe a maybe a topic for a, another show. But I, I do believe we're in a spiritual war um, in this country, and uh, some some of the pressure that 
that you're talking about comes uh, as a result of that that conflict um you know I, I, it just boils down to what we're talking about with um, this event you know on june 24th is it's just starting a community of men all we can really control is ourselves and and the the sphere of influence that we have so if you're single that's you and, and your friend group and if you're married that's you your family you know your workplace that that's that's really i think all we can ask of men you don't have to change the world just be a light right where you are it's called building tomorrow's leaders darius holland former nfl player is uh, going to be the featured speaker at the independent bible church saturday june the 24th from five to nine the cost is ten dollars you got dinner with that too but space is limited so you have to register how do you get in the door on this time you can buy a ticket in advance someplace or you're going to show up yeah, you can go online to uh, to just Google Independent Bible Church, or the website is ibcwv.org. Look under events, and uh, you can purchase uh, reserve a ticket for ten bucks. I was watching August Wilson's play in the movie form Fences yesterday. Denzel Washington is in that, and uh, there's a scene. His son turns around and says to him in the backyard after a heated debate about his playing football, "Why don't you like me?" And his dad said, "Like you." And he began to explain, <laughs> do you eat? Do you have a roof over your head when you sleep? Where do you get those clothes that you have on your back? And I'm watching that, and I'm thinking that these are the conversations that we've all had teen sons in this room, and we've all had that conversation. What do young men need? And I've got this about a minute for the answer here. What do, you, what do young men need from fathers and father figures? That's a great question, Rob, and um, this is a, a lot longer conversation than 60 seconds, but I think as a society, we do a poor job of transitioning uh, boys into manhood. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really, at what point, I mean, I would ask all of you, we don't have time to, to answer, but at what point did you realize you were a man? You know, for me, I'd gone through Green Beret training. I was working as an attorney in Washington, D.C. for the world's largest law firm and, you know, dating you know, gorgeous women from the embassy of Finland, New Zealand, Ecuador. I still didn't feel like a man. I think we can do a better job of helping young men uh, realize how to become a man and when they become a man. And that's one of the things that we're going to be working on with this community of men that we're talking about.